Hiya girls, we are Barney and Lukey and we are the hot young visionaries behind Truffle Pig Wigs. And this is Cliffhangers, the unofficial, unrequested and unhinged RuPaul's Drag Race recap show. The views and opinions expressed on Cliffhangers are from a couple of women who just love drag and have zero real business judging it. If you are not a fan of red hot acidic critique, turn back now. He is the walking, talking antibody to the substance. It's Barney. Boom. Well, the joke's on you, Lucrezia, because I haven't actually seen the substance. So I'm imagining that's sort of like, you know, just like uh, a call to arms of me being young, free, sexy and cool. It means you're the opposite of that. No, it doesn't. Old, locked in, unsexy and loser. What's the opposite to unsexy? You? Yeah. Ah, And she can't play hard to get because she's hard to want. It's Lucrezia Gorgia. Thank you so much. The boys all wanna, the girls all wanna. Yeah. Lucrezia, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. If a member of your family just so much on your lips that they were fused together in a sort of like glue, in a cruel twist of fate, in a sort of like glue. In a Tonya Chimp crazy kind of way. In a natural glue type (laughs) situation, thus rendering you unable to speak, disappointing your many, many tens of fan. How and will I could, lip sync if my lips are stuck together? Because you'll break through. Obviously, you'll break through. Okay. Obviously, through a, a feat of pure strength and ambition, you'll tear them open in, a, in I imagine, a lot of blood and cum. Very sore. Li- lips covered in blood and cum. What's new? Friday night. <laughs> Am I right? And you had to lips. Oh, you've just now, you've broken my train of thought. Sorry, sorry. Oh. So you're covered in blood and cum. Yeah. And you have to lip sync. Standard. Because at this point, you're like, I'm exhausted from it all. So I've got to tell the divas, how my week's been through a lip sync. What song are you choosing? I'm going to choose... Sorry, imagine you're... This is the first time you're listening to the podcast. It's like, I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure if I like it. I'm not sure this is what I want to clean my bathroom I'm going to sing Knowing Me, Knowing You. Uh Aha! Aha! By um, those young sexy bucks, Abba. Yeah. Just because uh, Saturday night, Halloween night at the Divine, aka the New Glory, aka the Old Birthdays. Yeah. Just meeting and greeting many of our customers and sort of drag legends. Tell them. Well, Minxie was DJ and our good friend Minxie, the professional goth. I who actually, I her. believe, has um, eschewed the title of professional goth. I know. Um, and I think but now that she, she, she is to me, though. I know. I think now she's just Minxie, the sort of wanton sex god with a very naughty girlfriend between her thighs. Mm. That is a Bridget Jones reference and sounds a lot less creepy than it was. OK, like good. Like I'm sort of like, uh, I've literally never met her girlfriend. <laughs> well, uh, I saw her girlfriend. Did you? Yeah, I didn't talk Love. to her. Just through the crowd. Um, just that sort of like lingering hand touches that like you do a taste every time you say that. Oh no, that was worse <laughs> than a hand, I think. Um, then met PMBC. Love. Who a weeks for it was quite funny because I saw her upstairs and I was like, "Hi!" And she was, I was, I had to wait for her to finish talking to this big group of people. And I was like, "Hi, I'm Truffle Pigs," and she was like, "Hi, nice to meet you." Like, and I was like, "No, I'm Truffle from Truffle Pig Wigs," and she was like, "Oh, I thought you were just telling me like you're a drag queen and your name is like Tatapi or something." <laughs> No, babes. And she lady, was wearing our lovely... Lady Truthful Pigs. Our lovely wig that we made her. And actually, we need to post a lovely oh, shot Oh, yeah, I've saved her. one. Don't shit gorgeous. Um, and then Rodent was there as well. I saw yeah. Rodent. They Do said, actually... nice costume to me. Then I was like, oh, Rodent. And I think that kind of scared him. And then later on, when it was the fancy dress competition, I went and saw Minxie. Which you won, obviously. I didn't enter. Uh, um, and got, then thought, they were... I thought you give the basic girls a chance. I get it. I get yeah. it. You're sweet. You're I did all a person heart. that one was really you sick. cut you through. And then Rhoda was like, oh, I didn't know you were a truffle pig. So I was like, yeah, baby, better believe it. But weirdly for me, <clears throat> sorry, let's just bring it back to me because it feels super weird talking about someone else. Um, I have, because Rodan is the partner of... Um, Ginger Johnson. Miss One Ginger Johnson. They're uh, normally our contact when you're yeah, in last so they, wigs. Yeah, they, so they, I've spoken to them, but I don't know them face to face actually at all. Mm. Um, but lovely. And how was the night? It was good, actually. I was a bit worried because... Without the original Glory or the Bethnal Green Working Men's Club, it's like, what is there on a, a low level thing to yeah, do? Just to sizzle. But it was fun. It was very fun. Got the gals out. Yeah. Maggie obviously nearly didn't come because feeling sickly because she is um, the young boy from yeah. Secret Garden. She, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Poor, sickly Victorian young. Colin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was very good. But young, so. Yeah. Still good. I was the pale girl from the Terrifier. You so fucking good. I so really good. enjoyed it. Just doing my creepy smile everyone all night. Yeah. And good friend Tom was, of course, Tonya from Chimp Crazy. Deep who friend. shared the picture. Deep friend of the pod celebrity hairstylist Tom She Berry. 
so many people have dressed up as her. She's so brave to share them all because like 80% like of them. Yeah, they shit. are literally yeah. like looking their worst. And but, and if one person is really going to go in for a rotted look, yeah. it's deep friend of the pod, Tom yeah. Bailey. Yeah. And Ben looked really great as the chimp as well. Mm-hmm. Hey, guys. Um, so, yeah, it was a good night all round. Just celebrity hairstylist Tom Berry listen to the podcast? If you do, hi, Tom. Well, I hope so. Maybe I'll listen hi, to Thomas. his episode. He gets mentioned a lot, to be honest. As much as Maggie, almost. Yeah. Nearly as much as these drag queens. Yeah. <laughs> Probably more than some of them. Funny. Yeah. I would be singing this week. I'd be lip syncing for the girlies. If you can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen. Woo! Because as someone who's been living in a guardianship, which quick, uh, if you don't know what guardianship is. I really don't like it, Kat. Uh, Disgusting! Yeah. Guardianships <laughs> are basically in London. You take an old school, you take an old firehouse, you take an old church and be like, we really don't want squatters in here. We will move people in, charge them rent, and then they basically have to look after the building, which means you get to live in insane buildings, but it does mean that you... Get mould lungs. What's it called? Yeah. What have we got? To- uh, toxic. Toxic mould soldiers. To- toxic mould. Toxic old soldiers, yeah, yeah. something. Um, and basically, I was living in a one in King's Cross, which was an old hospital. It was super sick. But when you live in these guardians, you have communal kitchens, which is sometimes terrible, but sometimes not. And this, my kitchen in this one was fine, but it just, I'm a big, big kook. I love to kook. He loves to cook. I do love to cook. And um, it just stopped me from doing it. And now that I've just moved back into a sort of a, a more conventional domestic situation sure with the girlies and have like a proper kitchen unpacked all of my many many boxes of kitchen paraphernalia i was like your cutlery your crockery your crockery to la cruise it yes i was like i fucking love cooking i've been cooking like nine meals a day every single day since i moved in i was like oh my fucking god literally just went to like the shop and just bought like my entire fridge is like 45 different jars of conserves and pickles and sauces and like just the biggest fucking henchest spice rack and yeah i've just been like oh my god i was like i can't believe that i've been not cooking from scratch every single day so get back in that kitchen baby because it's hot 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 it's back in business girls which means once i get my house in order oh the dinner parties will be having oh lovely i'll be cooking for everyone but very it, far away also. It's still, no, I reckon a week. I reckon about a week. No, I mean, your house is very far away. <laughs> oh, fair, fair. But if there's, listen, if there's a sort of a, an aubergine parmigiana and a lemon posset waiting for you there. Fair dues. Yeah. Fair bloody So I don't know, we'll start with some Jerusalem artichoke. I know the way to your heart. I, I would like a Jerusalem artichoke gratin. Actually, don't think <gasps> wise, please. So that would be fucking heavenly. I've yeah, had I could do it. That. I could it do that. Changed my life. Um, should we talk some drags? Yes. Previously on RuPaul's Drag Race UK. The ghouls formed Halloween pop groups. Ooh. Release a mafia was top of the pops, whereas the flops, Lil and Zahira, battled it out to a Mabel track. Lil reigned supreme as an albino snake that she is, while our lovely cherry blossom, Zahira, wilted, died and was chucked in the recycling bin in time for the Friday morning collection. Uh, why cherry blossom? That's what she had all over her headdress. Good. Oh, yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. I feel like these mirror messages have changed. It used to be a way to have the last word in an argument or just like start some shit. Yeah. But now it's just like, it's another marketing model. Just get your catchphrase and your song titles up there. Yeah. Which it's is got, actually a lot smarter. It's got their like pretty little thing, coupon code. Yeah. Something. It's like, I want, yeah, I want to be, I want to be talking some shit. Being like, I love most of you. Who? Name them. Tell them. Um, I'm loving, didn't really feature it that much, didn't really care about it when it was on, but loving the Zahira. Mm. When did it start? Because I feel like I'm only really getting into it now. Yeah, me she's too. Gone. Zahira. How would Lukey sound? Would it be Lucrezia, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, how would it sound? Would it be accompanied by a pinching pizza hand? Well, what, I think like with a, the click. <laughs> <laughs> the click. Maybe mine would be... Um, Lucrezia. Nice, nice. With a hand. Hey, yeah. No, because that's only when you're kind of like, oh, my, like, it's not, you just use it constantly. It's for when something's like I taking the piss or something. I mean, if you're an Italian cartoon, you do, I think. Well, not if you want to be wrong. Um, I feel like this is the first time that we've ever heard a girl come back in after a lip sync and it really shows you about the sort of emotional constitution of our girl, her royal highness Lil. I think it's the first time we've ever had a girl be like, I feel guilty. That was like that felt like such a human response. I was like, wow, yeah, like actually, I think people would feel guilty. It's like truly everyone coming in being like, 
do you know what? Like the baddest bitch won and I'm fucking glad to see her. Like, she's like, I feel guilty. And I was like, wow, yeah. Is that the first time I've ever heard that? Mm, I wouldn't say necessarily, but I can, I think you probably would feel more guilty if you're going up against someone like Zahira or Zahira. Kiki who have sort of consecutively been hovering around the bottom the whole competition. They got away with it the first two weeks because no one went home. Yeah. It's kind of like, it was the person that you kind of like, are they going to be in the bottom again? Yeah, probably. Am I going to have to beat them? Yeah, probably. Mm. Um, what are your thoughts about this early on if you were in the competition and you had such, you were really bearing the burden of such a heavy target on your back as old Chiranosaurus Rex? I, it's, I don't even think that it is that big of a target. She's only won two. I know, but everyone's really talking about her. Like they're going to have to like claw that money out of her cold dead hands. Well, after... Not to be, um, <gasps> what's the word? Fortuitous. No. Obnoxious. Um, no. Spoil. Ugly. I would just love it if you could let my brain cogs spin <laughs> more than two revolutions. Have you ever seen it? What, what film is it when he's like doing charades? And she's, he's like, um, um, and she's like, pathetic, um, gross, um, annoying. And he's like, no, it's like the crown. I, don't know, <laughs> I feel like I've seen it quite a few. I think they have a whole jokes like um pictionary jokes in brooklyn 99 i feel like I've, there's a few things with these kind of things as you'll hear later um well i've lost my train of thought now so it doesn't matter i'm um, just saying about kyran being having the big target on his back even though he's only won one um one challenge two challenges well yes not to be cynical but mm. the revelation of this episode it's a real cementer yeah true 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 but i don't want to be a cine sally I'm obsessed with Chanel's speeches. I say, uh, let the woman speak. Do you know what I mean? Listen to women. Yeah. We are too <laughs> comfortable. five female voices. We are too comfortable silencing women on that platform. <laughs> um, and they're also, and I will be loud and proud about this every single week. They're also getting very comfortable with how like open. I know that none of them don't, and I don't think any of them dislike her, but like it's become a bit of like a, a funny joke that it's like, we all hate Chanel. And it's like, no. I'm not. I'm not feeling it. I don't. Well, especially like it. she's getting softer and softer week by week. Yeah, she's trying to. She's trying to like. Was she ingratiate. even a bitch by the next episode? She's trying to ingratiate herself with you hoes. Like she's trying to. Not me. I'm. I'm a fan. Not me either. I'm. I'm. Where are you? I'm in her DMs. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but I don't really like. I wish they would all be a, a bit kinder to our Chanello. Okay, so it's a brand new work in the week room. Trend alert. Oh. Sheer new tops of tattoo esque vibe. Okay. Three of them. Chanel. Have you got a couple? Mm, no, actually. I, I don't need them. I'm I, covered. Covered I love a, I love a sort of like uh, Marbella beach side uh, souvenir restaurant. Souvenir restaurant? Marbella beach side souvenir shop. Like very, very cheap tattoo sleeve top. I think they're absolutely fantastic. Do you remember we used to give away... Um, the tattoo sleeves at bingo for yeah, like the first yeah, prize yeah, yeah. Great fantastic times. can i say i always relate the least to the hearty sweet kind boys it's like chara is so earnest and pure it's actually speaking so you're different... misgendering her and calling her a boy because you hate her so much for being chara, like... so it's like she's talking a different language you said the boys oh sure 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 the the, the kind sweet ones it's like <laughs> she's speaking a different language like she's just like so she's of such pure thought and heart that it's like I know nothing about this bitch. I can't. Oh, we are from different planets. Men are from Mars and cunts. Well, who knows where we're from? <laughs> <laughs> um, then my favourite Brit crew member comes in. Oh, you love Young them all. Liam. No, particularly this one because he's such a silly Sally. I know. I, found his I think Instagram. you love them for different reasons than the boys in that room love them. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure anyone would find how he acts on Drag Race sexy. He's acting... Bobo the Clown, Jimmy Let the Fool. Let me tell but you something. Before you do, I would just like to say he is a, also a DJ and a PT. A DJ. DJ and a where, PT. Where do we go to catch a, a set, a, a live hot set with is it like, DJ is, Liam? They're all over his Instagram. Really? Every, like, four shots out of five as him DJing in, love. in the club. Let me we tell you, Liam. what the boys love, from what I know of the boys, the gays, they love... Lord have mercy, I'm about to burst. They love a neek. They love a nerd. They Nerdy love a, geek. A gamer. They love if you can get like the the mind and pull up, uh, manners of a loser geek nerd inside the body of like a young wrestler. That's really going to hit for a lot of. Can games. I just stop you there? Because I've been led to believe recently that geeks and nerds are different things. Tell the pod. Well, I'm not actually sure. 
I think <laughs> I have nothing to back this up. But I've just heard. Well, someone was trying to tell me. I think like a nerd is more like someone who is just like very focused on a certain thing, like a computer nerd or something like. They know all about the yeah. computers. Whereas a geek is just a general loser. Okay, and which one would you say you are? I think I'm a lovely um, circle Venn diagram of the two. I really okay. You're like the the precipice of both. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cute. So also, going back to Liam, yeah. I saw that the casting requirements for the Brit crew, or maybe actually Pit crew. Casting requirements? Where are you reading this? On the internet. On the interwebs, okay. They have to be at least six feet tall. No, that's a lie. Well, attractive. That's a lie. Yeah, Athletic a and toned physique. Okay. No tattoos, which is rich because I saw no one on Liam's inner, inner arm. No tattoos. Aged 18 to 35 and comfortable in just underwear. I don't think that, I think, I call shade. I don't think that many of them are six, six foot. I call shade. As someone who Especially has. Especially barefoot. They haven't even got lifts to help them. Not even any risers no. for the girls. As someone who is often clocking the girls that are saying that they're six foot. <laughs> um, it's a much, much needed lie upon many of the girlies. Um, I feel like that's just not true. I just feel like I, I, I can't believe that. Who's that original one that I love? Oh my god, with the little moustache. He's not six foot. Like Brandon or something. No. Um, I who there's also one on the on UK that I absolutely love. Who's like um, who who was like Southeast Asian? And I he, feel like he Liam is the only regular foot. one. I feel like everyone else is very come and go. He was a cheeky choppy. Choppy? Sure. Sure. Very choppy, Bob. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what do I have to say about this? No, that's it. Should we talk Rue's entrance? Rue's already come in. Oh. We can talk the big pink chair with Raven. Ooh, let's talk about Raven. It's been a long time since we've seen Raven in her factory colours, isn't it? <laughs> I don't remember that setting, but... I she, think she's still a good, I, a good shades darker. She's, she's, she's teaked in quite a yeah. fierce way, but it The is, mystique of it all. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is quite a... We're not ebbing into the Rachel Dolezal collection just yet. Like she's... We've she's been still, and we've come back. We've been, we've got, yeah, We teetered on the edge. It. She's paired it back. She um, looked fucking gorgeous though, doesn't she? She is absolutely gorgeous. Although she was doing quite a weird thing of like quite strange... Um, the way that she was posing. She was like, it was like she was sort of like... I don't know, it was like she was holding in some IBS farts or something. Maybe, like. maybe she was. Yeah. Because they're all mic'd up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want and that to And they got me to think it. I hope that Raven, Hunty... Yeah. Um, I hope she gets paid a separate fee to be on screen to get up in the drags. Like, her yeah, pain. Of but really? Or are they just like, it'll be, it's good for you to keep you current. It's good. For, like, can you just come on and just help us with this? No, surely not. I hope so. Because she's like a guest. She gets like um, her name in the credits at the end and stuff. Well, yeah, I hope so. But maybe that's part of it. Maybe it's part of it. Talk so, to me about the pink chair. Okay. My favourite jokes. I'll let you know. Yeah. Marmalade's joke about the busty crustacean. So, can you repeat it? Uh, no. It's something about like the diff- uh, one's a busty crustacean and one's a crusty bus station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the punchline. Yeah. Love. Then releases one is why do they call, why are they called seagulls or something? And the the punchline is because then they'd be called bay gulls if they flew yeah, over yeah, the bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Lil's, Lil's joke as well was like, oh, he threw cheese at me. I was like, how mature? Then he threw some more. And I was like, how jerry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Into it. I think Kiki kind of killed the Flintstones joke because that's one that's one I keep in my back pocket. Is it? I was I was literally just about to ask. If you had to stand up and now you can't say the Flintstones. But can I tell you how I think it should be delivered? Hit me. So you know in Bahrain they don't get the Flintstones on telly. Why? But Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, into it. Mine would be how do you titillate an ocelot? How? Oh. Oscillate its tits a lot. <laughs> <laughs> love, love, love. What would yours be? Mine would be, <clears throat> how do you sell a pig on a motorway? How? One bad one. Very That's good, very good. Um, so then Lady Rubella announces that they're doing a mini version of the Graham Norton show. Um, I, I like this as a challenge. Can we bring back more of the lesser spotted challenges? Like? We haven't seen this since poor old Cher's mother and... And oh, son, got absolutely. Old, who's old um, tacky, tacky accessories? Uh, Jocelyn Fox is like, so let's talk about abortion. Yeah. When was the last t- time you killed a child? And then who's the one Just who's like... Just an open question, Lukey. When was the last time you killed a child? Oh, God. Not, not recently enough, to be honest. Yeah. And then who was it that just kept asking questions and like, 
And then how did you find it? How did, was it when you noticed? And did you even notice? And what were you wearing at the time? When I think you it might, might have been Chan- No, it can't have been Chanel. But I it was very it was Chanel sh- energy. Like, yeah. But Chanel, do you know what? Chanelogy was where Chanel SH for you. Um, she was in the interviews when they were having, when they had to do the interviews in her season. Mm. She was like that. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who it was to though. But I can remember thinking, oh my God, bitch, come up for air. Like, what are some is... other old good challenges? They've only ever done that like magazine. Want to buy once. some cherry pie? That's always that what was I think absolutely of. Mental. Absolutely insane challenge. Um, so uh, I would fucking hate this, if I'm honest. I would find this quite unbearable, this, this get up and tell a joke. I, I suppose none of them were good at it. Like no one really... No one really told a good one that actually had anyone. Well, really... then it's not meant to be a joke. It has to be an anecdote. It can't just be a joke. You're meant to, well, it's supposed to be like take a... me somewhere. Well, it's supposed to really make them laugh and no one really succeeded. No. And I think that if like, uh, not to bring up the Duchess always, but I was just thinking there's like certain people that if they just stood up, Bob, if Bob stood up, they'd be able to tell you a joke that made everyone really fucking laugh. If Katya stood up, she'd really be able to, if... But like, again, all of these people, they could just tell you the story of them Alyssa. brushing their teeth in the morning and it would be funny. Yeah, yeah, true. But I think that we, the comedy chops weren't chopping. But I've got a whole issue. I guess we'll get to it later. But just like the Is whole it, format that, that of patch of dry it. skin behind your ear. Huh? The patch of dry skin behind your There's ear. There's no dry skin on me, bitch. That's true. <sighs> just like he the whole, it like, it felt so like fake like oh and here's Barney and doesn't he have a whale of a time when he goes away and then you just tell a random story like there was no like conversation it was just like I'm gonna like introduce you with a random sentence that has nothing to do with the story you're gonna awkwardly tell it just felt and then then like no one commented on each other's stories it was just like oh, everyone stand up and say your thing where are we into the no but I'm just talking about the format of the whole sure thing, sure awkward. do you know what it was though it's the you can't successfully group interview people. That's that's why people don't get group interviewed. Mm-hmm. Like it, that's a really hard thing to do because I'll tell it to the Spice Girls. Well, the whole point of but they do they wouldn't get group interviewed. Like you would in like a let's talk about your new album, something mm-hmm. that's like collectively outside of you. But if it's just an interview, you want to get to know that person, and it's too difficult when it's like all these they're all different people. They don't have anything connecting them apart from they're all sitting on their own testicles. Do you know what I mean? Like that's it's like there's nothing there. Um, but let's head into the group chit chat where they do, they find out about the challenge, which is you're gonna give them a rundown of the challenge. Well, the challenge is they have to go on the Graham Norton show. Exactly. <laughs> Kiki, as the winner of the pink chair challenge, splits up the teams and does an absolutely terrible job of. You weren't a fan of Couchy Snatches. Um... <laughs> what? <laughs> of Couchy Snatch. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I was getting confused with Hannah Kiki Kauki then. You really? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, sure. Kauki. Kelky snatch. Um, Sorry, we have a we have a friend called. Friend is very loose. Oh, okay. Some, I, I, I somebody a, that we uh, used to know. So, someone that I was good friends with uh, called Hannah Kiki Kelky. So I thought it was Kelky snatch. Sure. Um, Did you think? Do you think she thought it was going to be a group challenge, and that's why she's like, I want the funny good ones on my team, and didn't think that maybe they'd actually be her direct competition. I think if you were doing this and you were smart, you would. The only thing that matters is be like, who are my best friends with in this room. That's who I'm going to be most relaxed with. You don't want like, oh, who's going to be funny? Who's going to be loud? Who's going to be any of that? Like, it's like, who am I going to be able to sit and have a proper conversation with? That's what you want because Graham's going to make you feel fine. Graham's going to relax you, ask you questions. What is going to be the difficulty is not... So we call him Graham on the pod? Graham. Is not going to talk... You don't want to be talking over to each other. You want to have like ease and like conversational flow between the girls as well. So that's Mm. what I would go for. There was none of that. No, absolutely not. Who would you have wanted to be with most and who would you have wanted to be with least? Literally what I have written down here for you. Um, Well, as Charlie, the soothsayer, predicted Lavoie and friends, I would not have wanted to be on Lavoie's team or in her group. I maybe very um, controversially, I actually didn't, I didn't like the energy that Le- I, I, I. I want you not liking Lavoir again for the six week in a row. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's actually um, five weeks. I did. I didn't really like the energy that she brought to the thing because I thought she and maybe listen, maybe she won, so it doesn't matter. But I did think that it was the Lavoir show, and if I was doing that, I'd be super careful about that because mm-hmm. I would. I if if I felt like I was, it was the energy kept on coming back to me. I would be throwing it out to other people. Mm-hmm. So you. So sorry you. Would want her on your team or you wouldn't? No. No. 
Uh, who would I want? I guess I think Lil. I yeah, mean, um, my... imagine me choosing Lil for anything. Top pick. Yeah. Um, then we have the team chats. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Top picks for me, Chanel and Lil. I 100% want to be with Chanel. I think she's mm. funny. Yes, I think was... she's. I think she's got a sorbic wit. Who would you least want to be with? Lavoie. You would also. Okay. Um, also, I think as well, unfortunately, even though I hate to throw my Irish sister under the bus, there's a, mm, there's a lack of ease with charity that I would probably be like. I'm I thought sure. she was better than a lot of them. Like she jumped on that that free question very well and kind of saved self. Yeah. But again, we're, we're scooching too far. I Throw know. it back in. Um, there was a, what's it called? Confessional bit of Chiron. Yeah. Um, talking about very genuinely getting advice from RuPaul and just like, you know, like she's been on TV for years Like this is going to be an amazing chance to just like get some really like good things. It's like, this is so unnerving seeing you like this. Normally every time... Like she's talking, that tongue is planted so firmly in her cheek. Yeah. Like, Sorry, you're being serious right now. It's going to give me the ick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you're grossing me out. I didn't like, know she had it in her. Um, do you think you'd do well at this challenge? If it is tell a funny story, then yeah, fine. I think you'd do better than pretty much anyone that was on it. I've got two stories in my back pocket that I could do, I reckon. Give me the first five words of each one. I'll see if I know what stories you're talking you, about. I think everyone in the pod knows who they are. One time I was in. <laughs> Love it. No indicators of literally anything. You said the first one words time. Of the story. So it happened to you in the past. Yes. <laughs> a story that happened to you in the past. And the where other you time were was, in a location. I was very drunk and. <laughs> Unfortunately, if we're going to be categorizing them by all the times that you were not sober. It's but exactly. Like, you invented yeah. this game. Yeah, sorry. They would be the. the one keyword for each. Acid. Sure. Or jellyfish. Yeah. Um. Or I'll do two. Pissy jumper. Yeah. Oh, sure. Brilliant. Both brilliant stories. Uh, c- absolutely Maybe obsessed. the pissy jumper one is a bit much. Uh, w- either of them. Just absolutely obsessed with the idea of you telling either of them on Drag Race on the Beeb. Like, so there's one time when me and my friend were on, a, we were in our beaver, we were on acid, and I realised my pussy lips were hanging out. It's like, please tell us more, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> you are watching the Beeb. Ooh, oh, la, la. Um, I feel like I'd be really good at this, but I would just have to learn to shut the fuck up. And I am quite deep in my years now i think I haven't me and yet. everyone on the pod is aware of how you like to interject and yeah. talk but i am in in a most terrifyingly manipulative way i think i'd probably be able to do it fine if i was on tv and it, there was money oh yeah of course yeah yeah yeah. i know how to play the game rue asked kiki if she is conversational to be met with literally barely any words at all it's like yeah i like love talking <laughs> you ain't shit. fooling anyone question are you aware of the lesser spotted rosham bosham jumble mind well she's mentioned rosham josham already yeah. and how interesting that we've both mentioned lesser spotted within the last 10 minutes were you aware of its work previously before the... kiki yeah no rosham bosham i've never heard of it but i think maybe we could ingratiate into our into our daily chit chats would Just... it be culturally inappropriate of us to mention that i don't know is it, it, is it, I don't is know. it culturally uh, i don't know i don't specific. know if it's like a solution thing that she's oh, saying sure. rosham bosham i no idea it's quite onomatopoeic it's quite it's did you just, not do any deep dives? No, I did actually Google it. Nothing came up. No. <laughs> so I, may have, I may be way off with my spellings. So that, who knows? Um, should we take a more sensitive and soft approach now as we discuss the very, very unexpected, uh, confronting, difficult trip that we took into Chiran's past love history? Love? I don't oh, know what you said. That's not, we don't classify it as love. I was going to say love life, but that's not it. Like... His experience with child. Uh, I, I mean, I don't even know oh how God, to. It's taking so long to get this in. Like, can I just say, I'd love to just mention something on Team Releaser beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking for so long. <laughs> Sorry, I was just trying to find the words. But I haven't written it down. I was like, I don't really don't know how I would classify <laughs> the story about what you were saying. Let's talk Team Releaser, Lisa. Uh, just that Octavia does one of my pet peeves, <laughs> saying something which is perfectly clear and easy to understand, and then following it sense? with a. If, if that makes sense. It's like <laughs> a layman couldn't even comprehend the thoughts I've got going on in this brain. Love it. It's like, oh God, if only I could just get this through to the dumb bitches in the room. And it's like, so what I want to do is like have my lunch and then I'll probably like go to the shops. Like, if that makes sense. Yeah, God, no. But, but if you maybe drew some pictures, maybe <laughs> um, let's talk Kyran. What a fucking insane, truly insane, but quite relatable for, I imagine a lot of, 
well, young queer kids. I I was never really on the old chat rooms. I think I was, I'm a bit older than yeah. that. I got away with it. But yeah, were... how truly fucking gross and disgusting, predatory. I hope he's still in prison. Absolutely disgusting, isn't it? And I think... And then all the guilt, sorry, all the guilt that Kyron had and then the guilt that their mum has as well. Like, horrible. It's insane, isn't it? Because I think... I think that what's, what's so fucking crazy about it is that there is many, many people that I think of, especially of, I don't know how old Kyron is, but like of our generation, I would think. I'd say 25. Yeah, that like experience that, like I, that was my experience 100% of like, you would go online, especially as young queer people that like maybe didn't have community. I don't know. They're regional, aren't they? They're from like- You're regional. Mid- Midlands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't have community. Didn't <laughs> have- didn't... Try and get... You're regional also, yeah, Barney. Yeah. No one else from London. <laughs> so you deserved it. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, didn't have community. So therefore we're like finding community online and just like there's literal like the honey trap that is online of just like being able to. And I just remember when I was younger, I used to have so many of these like weird parasocial relationships. Can you have parasocial relationships if they're not famous? I don't know. But like you would chat to people. The majority of my like first relationships, like as like a young queer person were people that I didn't meet for two months Mm. before. Do you know what I mean? Like you'd get, start talking to someone and be like, oh, it's a gay guy from, from London. And it'd be like, you talked to them for two, three months before you went and met them in London. And like, just like crazy shit like that. Luckily, I was from the age of webcams. So you could at least hopefully see them. So would, if there was someone that was like, I don't want to show you my picture or, you know, how all these like sort of catfishing things are like, oh no, like my Wi-Fi is down and I, I would love to really video chat with you, but like, oh, I can't, like all these excuses. Yeah, did yeah, you yeah. Not, did you Well, that just that? like wouldn't keep me interested. Yeah, like, I need to know whose who's face I'm well, yeah, because also rocking as well, this knob off to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a tiny little 13-year-old dick. Um, I think it grows by the time you're 13. That's when you start puberty. So yes, yeah, you've got the same age, same size dick as you did when you were 13. I don't really remember. Why don't you take monthly measurements? Your dad's too busy. To um, <laughs> I just measure it on your dad's gob. Yeah. Um, um, it's, uh, yeah, but it's, it's it's very strange because I feel like, unfortunately, like if I, maybe this is horrible to say, but like, as they were saying it, I was like, this actually feels like quite like a vital conversation to be having because for like actually loads of queer people would be like, yeah, I was it, like involved in a situation exactly like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just hope that Kyran had um, the much needed like aftercare and, Obviously, it's like still deeply traumatic for them, and it's like been like quite a formative experience. Mm-hmm. But God, I just when I was watching, I was like, oh, like getting quite emotional. I was like, oh God, I am. Um, and I know many people. It was like really flooding back a lot of like experiences from like other people, other queer people, even like other like my other friends in that age. That was like oh, non queers. Yeah, 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 wow. like girl, girls in being in predatory situations with like other men, boys, especially because I was part of the alt goth scene. Mm-hmm. Young girls being in very predatory online relationships and situations with men in bands and like shit like that. Mm. All of my friends were literally I all of my friends that I grew up with would be able to tell you at least one story about being solicited for like pictures or on webcam or whatever for I was gonna say, Oh, let's get some stories for the hangover. But- <laughs> Maybe not, maybe yeah, not. if you'd like to tune into our secret pod, we'll be deep diving on many young girls' tr- sexual trauma throughout the years. Um, but yeah, crazy. But I just hope that our babes is. Um, I hope she's uh, mm. she's doing she's doing better now. I've got a question for you. Go on. Where do you stand on chemical castration? Probably not standing up. Probably take a bit of aftercare. <laughs> um, I feel what for people that have like sexual for like serial rapists or paedophiles, where it's just like I'm a paedophile, this is my preference, I can't help it, kind of the, thing. The the nasty vindictive part of my brain goes, yep, yeah, do whatever. But you, I don't trust the judicial system. This is why I could never be against like kill them. But there was like they have admitted to it or like there's sure, pure evidence. Sure. If it's there like, was these like people, you like, cause I feel like if you're that kind of person, like your sex drive is basically a loaded gun and you can't be carrying that around. Yeah. You. I mean, I think better than that. I think if we had a judicial system that people respected and actually believed in, then you would put them in prison. It's much, it's much worse to be stuck in prison. And to rehabilitate them, hopefully. But you can't rehab- rehabilitate a paedophile if, like, the thing that gets them horny is. But then they'd be boys stuck in prison girls. forever. They have but then, live- what you're going to just build a million prisons that. for these people that are just when you could just they take a pill or injection or whatever, and they just don't have a sex drive. But would then you put them back out in society? Well, yeah, because their sex drive is the problem. So if they don't have a sex drive, they're not they're not having to 
drive to go and attack I women don't children. know enough about the medical viability of that to be like sure they don't have a dick anymore they're no they don't hormones. cut off your dick you just they, you take something and it just t- kills your sex drive nothing is taken away from your body chemical castration I thought yeah. it was sort of like acid burned off your <laughs> I don't, again I know nothing about this oh interesting so they still have a dick I mean you would you would be worried that psychologically they might still even a lot of people do this is why I think it, you can fall into problems I don't think all paedophiles do it because they're like super horny like it's, no, it's to like do a with power thing yeah power but if you can't get don't... it up then you it's like but like it's to do about it's about the victim sometimes mm-hmm. it's not about like getting th- gra- sexual gratification with them oh my god what a fucking deep dive for the pot like i get hard dark, i feel like I, w- I would just literally love to castrate all of them but we can't do that i say chemical castration but then i think like put it, them in a little area out of town somewhere they can all just go and like rub each other's nipples if they want to i don't but know but then i think like i i think if we're gonna do that if we're gonna like fit, i don't know it's 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 also as well needs to be treated as like a mental disorder. Like it's, a it's psych- that whole Louis Theroux, psychological- isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like, it's actually like, obviously I don't have any sympathy or empathy for them, but it's deeply sad because these people are like absolutely fucked in the head. Mm. So I don't know. It's, it's, um, have you got anything to say about the Limi day? The day of elimination? I have a few thoughts. Go on, tell them, chit chat. Well, poor old Kiki, when they all walk in on elimination day, she's holding holding back and then she just does like the beginning of like a catwalk and they cut away you know how like Nasty. Valentina or whatever yeah, yeah, starts yeah. coming to like show it and they also really seem to give a lot of camera work for our girl um our girl Kyran she seems to always get a nice sort well, of she's coming in four or five seconds yeah playing silly buggers who would you like to interview dead or alive <gasps> Oh my god, what a fucking great question. I mean so many well, you people. You can thank Charlie obviously, for that, I believe. Obviously, number one would be um I'd love to interview Amy Winehouse. There's not enough when when you get into the back to black eras, she really stopped doing press because obviously the re- re- relationship that she had with the press. So what so what like era of Amy would you want to um interview? Probably that probably that era when Back to Black first came out. Pre Blake pre oh, like no, the whole mid, tabloid kind of mid rundown. Blake. okay well like the um, camden no shoes stuff yeah although let's let's um categorize her time on this earth by the music yeah the back to black era <laughs> um also i would absolutely love having only met her very quickly i would love to interview grace jones mm. be like hey girl you know we've got the same birthday Ooh. um love to interview her and then i'd also love 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 to interview who would give me... Oh, I'd, it'd be historical. I'd want to chat to, like, Marie Antoinette or someone. Mm. That would be fucking crazy. Imagine chatting to someone that, like, literally no one has ever really spoken to and documented properly. Mm. Do you know Sick. what? They've, they've bastardised one of your phrases, Yeah, babe. isn't it? But you'd love the, you'd love the Sophia Coppola film, I promise <laughs> you. You're very cute and fun in it. Um, who about... What about you? Mm, there was no one that instantly came to mind. What about um, the guy from Marilyn Manson that you had sex with when you were... What, Pogo? Pogo. I respect him. <laughs> My first thought was maybe like Kevin O'Quan for all the tips. Oh, Personalized that's tips. such a good one. And then you could be like, what would you do on my face? Yeah, help just me. Just quickly, just as I'm interviewing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, what, like, what are you thinking? Light beat, yeah. Or maybe a double uh, Eurotrass interview with Antoine and Jean-Paul. Oh, oh, oh we might as well throw Lolo as well. Come oh, on. Lolo. And Pippi and Poo why not? Yeah. I had to Google who Holly Jervis is. What? Bring on that pecan pie. I still don't really know who she is, but she's on X Factor she or something. She's on X Factor and she was like, she's probably top three Pantheon uh, X Factor Her, auditions Rachel ever. and the click. Rachel. No, I would say um, I uh, the holistic voice coach, the, one, the woman Ariel with the, who recently actually, she died. I think she can. I was like, apparently I'm not that much of an X Factor girl. She is really the one that she's the like, I'm a holistic vocal coach. First of all, I'm not a number. And she's like, Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Baby. God. And she's like, You want to hear me rush? That's like a weird. She's like, This is a, um, oh my God, we'll have to put it up on the pod. Abs- <laughs> we didn't put anything up on the pod last week, no, I realised. You know what we're like. <laughs> we're crazy. Thoughts on this interaction between Shara and Chanel? How deep was the shade from Puddle to Mariana Trench? <laughs> Um, can you be more specific about when you're talking about what the Shara shade? goes but Chanel if you were on a chat show you'd have to let someone else talk from time this is to when time. it feels like super like um, cultivated boring like but to me that just drama. felt like, like this is so the lame. minorist that, that yeah. was just like a so, joke I don't know why Chanel yeah, was yeah, yeah. the most presse elder flower she's obviously Lady Presse because 
Like, they're just making it already obvious that, like, they're not really featuring her. And she's not, like... I think she thought maybe that she would come in and be the one, the two, the three. Mm. And she's not really getting that edit. Because it's kind of focused around she's people being, like... Three. She talks so much. And, like, but, and so I think, like... Shut your mouth. Respect the Chanel. Should we take a break? Yep. Let me tell you something, you ugly bitch. Ear looks. Yep. A cab first. Sorry, week. I just take off my thing. I'm boiling now. This take off tea. that robe. Can um so, and put a little making whoopee in it as well. Like sort of give me a little shimmy or something. <laughs> hey yeah. Uh, um so you know you ain't gonna like this, let me tell you. The you aren't gonna like this. Met police. The Met Police Boo. had Bob Lambert, who was a spy. Adam's brother. He yeah. Uh, he went undercover to infiltrate an environmental activist ring. To leak information back to the police about... Um, I, I do know exactly all about this, but tell the gals. Oh, because you've heard it on a podcast? Yep. 19 years that this man went um, under... He was under... Uh, what's it called? Undercover. And for 19 years, he had sexual relationships with four different women under the guise that he was. Because he created an entire new life for himself as this undercover policeman. With one of the women, he had a child... And this was all to extract information to feed back to the police. The woman found out that he was an undercover policeman and that this, her basically her life and her child's life was a lie. She sued him and won. Congrats, bitch. Like, but there was a whole team of them. It was like a whole, um, like, act, like what they're called task force thing. Yeah. That most of the main police didn't even know about it was so secret. So, like, if you did have suspicions, like, no one really from the police would believe you. And there was like, what, multiple of them, and they didn't really get any intel. And at what point, as well, were you like, oh, she actually doesn't have anything to do with this? Like, why do we not, like, how about we don't just like ruin a woman's life? And, and like, it's like, then, he could have infiltrated without having anything romantic, but no, yeah. I'm a man. I want to get me fucking dick wet, don't and I? Ha- ha- he had four sexual relationships with four different women. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, gross. Like, truly, when women say... Disgusting! When women say the bear, like, it makes it gets gains further and further clarity every single day. But do you know what? What? If a black woman was in a tube carriage alone, she'd rather be in there with a white man than a white woman. So, sometimes... Is- you live Where long you... enough to become the bear. Oh, sure. Where are you sort of get like... Something I saw on Instagram the other day, people were, like talking about the bear thing and how it's ridiculous. And then it's like, well, it even goes deeper than that. In a study where we asked this many... So, but that... Sorry, so you're saying that they, would they, they think the that black white women, women... would feel more supported by a white man than another white woman because of I think racist that's quite, feminists. I think that's quite a... Quite, quite, I don't. I don't think that many people would agree with that. Well, that was a study that they did, similar, exactly the same as the bear one. But like, what realistically? What like the th- when we're talking about not wanting to be like in the woods with is bear or man? It's because of the threat of violence or sexual violence. Yeah, mm. and it's like, are they saying that? I mean, you you do some. Um... I do. I understand the. I understand the the concept behind it, but I'm just saying that like surely. I mean, see if I can look it up quickly if you um, riff. Um, but how, I mean, I'm glad that you knew that. Um, I'm glad that you knew that. Let me tell you something, you ugly bitch. But just, I, I mean, obviously, uh, I don't need to tell you any of this, but obviously just another reason never to trust the police, never to go near them, never to, and remember, a cab to die. Absolutely not. Let's dismantle the uh, broken systems. Although, at least Tommy Robinson's gone to jail for 18 months today. He has. He has. Oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, Fab, also, did you see that he raised uh, about £80,000 from his... One thing Tommy Robinson going to do is he's going to raise some money from it, the absolute gammons of this country and then just like spunk it on something completely useless. And they he, won't even care. He They'll... raised £80,000 so that he could go into court and say that I'm not uh, guilty. First thing. He did. I'm guilty. Yeah. What's the eighty thousand pounds for, Tomo? And then his fans are still like, oh, like he was made to. This is lies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like he literally admitted it. Just like I know. Fuck off. Also, as well, do you like? It, 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 do you know why about why he's going to prison? 
something about um, telling lies about um, an immigrant or something. Fantastic. So you you would say you're you're an expert on the subject. Um, a, a deep court. intellectual. Well, he basically um, created. Oh, yeah, I'm also not. You didn't even remotely, know he went to jail. Prison. Rem- I'm not remotely an expert on it either. Don't worry. <laughs> um, he basically uh, created a like a documentary film that was just like complete slander, complete lies um, about um, obviously his number one uh, love of Muslims and um, just a deeply Islamophobic uh, thing. And they, when it was first released, um, he got in trouble with the police and they were like, this is slander, this is lies. He was taken to court. And then they were like, if you ever show this publicly, like as part of the court case, if you ever show this publicly or put it on a public platform, you will go to prison. So then when he did a speech in Trafalgar Square for all his gammons, he played it. And they were just like straight away like, you're going to prison. Yeah. That's insane. But yeah, we'll do a deep dive on Stephen Lennon Yaxley. If uh, you want to head over to The Hangover, um, remember in our notes, join the many legions of fans that have... Uh, don't worry. Please, subscribers, don't send back your subscriptions. We're not actually going to talk no, about No, we're not going to talk about that. Absolutely. But we are going to talk loser. about the main stage, Rue and the judges. Let's talk. Um, I, I thought, thought Rue looked the best I've seen her in ages. Really, my first line is I thought this hair looks a bit mental on Rue. Um, the outfit, maybe more. I did love this. Very sort of Alexandre Vauthier. Quite loved it. Pasta Gouvothier. Yeah. Um, quite loved it. Quite loved the, uh, the the dynamic blue on her. But you know what? What? That wig could have been two or three or even four times bigger. So I put, this hair looks a bit mental on Rue. I just thought also it was quite badly done. But I do know that our the Rue's hairstylist does follow us on insta so hey we love you loving your work you love your loving work. your proportions love your work love your proportion um everybody's favorite step thoughts some real fans might still be holding grudges from what her and h pulled at the last night of their gold greatest hits tour in 2001 but and how and are you <sighs> we know at least scott lee girl because she smiled at me at top of the pops and also as well like come on obviously everyone loves fatoza more than they could possibly even get into words if all we can all we can all collectively agree on is who our least favorite step is lee I'm looking at you, Latchford Evans. Um, <laughs> how, straight as well. Get out of here. How many packs do we think Shelley's got in that hair system of hers? Because she has width and height. I'd say, if we're talking drawstring ponies, yeah. at least 12. At least, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, 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 same. Um, is it fair to say that our girl Claire, she's a bit of a yo-yo girly for the weight, isn't she? You never really know where you're going to see with Claire. No. It's like when, for the for the last tour, she like really, she was, she... I think she like zempied it up or something. She got she got it all all the snatch back, the bounce. When you see them old pictures of her and she's literally just in like low low beach trousers and a bra top, it's like oh my god. But again, not to glorify skinniness. No, but shame a girl for yo yoing. Like it's a lifestyle for some of us. It is. We don't know whether we're up, we're down. <laughs> you don't know whether it's the tight tight jeans or the stretch pants for the next six months. Well, Who knows? Exactly. That's the spice of life. Um, let's talk the Graham Norton show because what a f- I would. Much like I think later on, I can't remember who said it, but they were like, "I have envisaged being on the Graham Norton show for ye- for like since I was a child." Do you watch it? Are you a, are you a fan? Avid, L- really? I, I think Graham Norton is hands down one of the best interviewers. You can tell I because his work on the Father Ted. Um, you can tell because th- he has the number one. He's one of the only chat shows that has like a list stars. Mm. You name it, he's had every single a list. Like, they want to go on Graham Norton. It's globally respected. Yeah, I don't watch it. But sometimes if you see a clip, it's like, yeah, he's got like four insane A-listers sat together yeah, on that Yeah, yeah, it's insane. He'll have like, oh, it's like Samuel L. Jackson sat, ne- sat next to like Judy Dench, sat next to Dua Lipa, sat next to mm. like, do you know what I mean? It's like, these are, and they're always like a real like breadth of like famous people. Have yeah. you ever seen or heard of the programme Nathan for you? Yes, I have. What is it? Oh, wait. I've heard of it, but I sure, don't know sure, what sure. it was. So basically, it's like a comedy show and this guy goes to failing businesses and comes up with ridiculous ideas and how they could do it. Yeah. But then one episode, he gets invited onto the Jimmy Kimmel show and he gets really paranoid that he doesn't have a funny anecdote because that's what you're expected to do. So he basically makes up this crazy story and then so that he doesn't fuck it up, he like makes it happen in real life. Mm. So the story is that he's going to a wedding and then at the airport, he picks up the wrong luggage and the luggage contains just like a giant oversized suit, like 20 sizes too big or whatever. So that's the only thing he can wear to the wedding. So then he's driving on the way to the wedding and gets pulled over by a policeman. And then the policeman sees something hanging out of his coat jacket pocket. And he's like, what's that? And it's a baggie full of powder. So the policeman's all like, you've got to get out of the car. And it turns out 
that it's the guy who owns the giant suit's mother's ashes that he keeps on him the whole time. But he tells this story and then it's like intercut with like footage of this like actually happening. He like sets up the whole thing and it is hilarious. It's like, that's what I want from a fucking anecdote. Do you and know I would what? Put a when... picture of him in the giant suit online. Do you know, please do. Do you know what? When uh, the pe- I can't remember who it was that was telling the story when they were like, oh yeah. And then like, I was on the train and I had a, su- a big suitcase. And I was like, they're going to tell the fucking dog story. <laughs> I was like, oh no, not Urban Legends. You're going to get absolutely hang out to dry, my friend. Um, so in the first group, I thought Lavoie might have had points taken away from her because she li- she chimed in immediately. Graham didn't even have a chance to do like a little bit of patter. Yeah. She just was like, I'm telling a joke. That's why, even though I did, I, I get that like she came across well. That's why I was like, personally for me, it felt, I would just be way more conscious of like, I don't want to. Showboat. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I, I mean, I guess showboating, but like I am on there with the girls. We are on here as drag queens. I would tr- be trying to think like we're on here like a band. Mm. That it's because we're on Drag Race and we're here to talk about like. So I would just have a different energy rather than be like, I'm going to show them. I did think I thought her story was a bit long, but I did find her to be like the most kind of relaxed fit, if you will, talking jeans. Um, like. She seemed like she's been on a thousand talk shows and like she chimed in on other people's, but not too, not like in Snatch Game when people try and steal. Like she, mm. I thought she had like funny quips. She I was super she did easy breezy. I, yeah, I thought she was super easy breezy. It's that, it's, it's, she's, she's just super relaxed and that's what you want to, you want to hear. Yeah, see, she felt right? like a real celeb on a real yeah, talk yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think she did do really well, but I think they, what I think, this is an unfair criticism towards her because she did probably do the best out of anyone. But I just wish the girls had been more galvanized in creating like a, we're a group of girls and we're here together energy. Mm. I think the best person at that was Marmalade. Yeah. She was the only one that kind of like threw it back or was even like looking at the girls when she was telling the story rather than looking at Graham or the crowd. I did think that Marma felt a bit rehearsed. It felt a bit worked. Like Mm -hmm. some of the lines, it felt like she'd like, she knew exactly what she was going to say, which kind of didn't really help ease up on like, the it felt alive and in the moment but a hundred times more that than the people that hadn't thought about how they're gonna oh, tell yeah, their I'd story much, and I, it's just like going off and they're she was one of my faves i'd m- much rather watch her all day what about it all began when i got bitten by a pig what a well, fantastic she, <laughs> no, I don't, yeah. anything else you're gonna say i'm into it although she did miss a trick by not calling what happened to her pig martyr i thought oh, <laughs> um i also thought the releaser in the next group felt very rela- relatable very chill um yeah but, the way she just came in and sat down she looked like not phased at all yeah, she was yeah, like, yeah. Like yeah but i did think that she is having a hard time because the whole group feels very uneasy mm. they felt very disjointed as a group they didn't feel like again they were given the energy of like we're the girls we're here yeah we're having fun and i think that that's i think maybe i was thinking that maybe it would feel a bit different if you were actually on the graham norton show because there'd be an excitement to it but because it's just like, on the main stage i wish they'd done it in a different setting mm. I was quite impressed with how just up they they did really make it. They look did like this they set. Do I did like it. I've yeah. got a question. Yeah. When uh, Graham introduces Chare, he was like, "She comes in many flavors." Oh, sorry, I'm thinking it now. You just got it now. Tea. Tea comes in many flavors. Is that it? I thought it was come, like because she's so colorful. She comes in many flavors. Yeah. But what's that? So we're saying colours are flavours now. I don't know. I, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't really think It was it. very weird. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought like, wow, they really let him get away with that one, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, strange. Um, I thought Chanel looked absolutely gorgeous. She always, she often always does. Gorgeous. She, she's got a lovely, she's got that lovely soft Delta work face. She does. I love. Um, would you bang someone that had a life-size xenomorph? I don't know enough about um, Alien versus Predator for it to bother me. Although it probably would fucking bother me. Like actually, it's well, just scary. a life-size alien in the house. Yeah, that's quite terrifying, isn't it? Um, but you want to ask, what that mini mouth do? Ah! Um, I don't really. Know. What does it look like? The I thing, mean, an alien is probably terrifying, isn't it? You know, haven't haven't you seen Alien? Sigourney Weaver, like there's like the big black the one that thing that's got like the long head. Oh, uh, with got the drippy, the, drippy jaws. And it's got like the mini mouth inside yeah. the mouth. Yeah, oh no, no, no. So I like a know. one for yeah, one. Yeah, that's not for me. Because I think they're bigger that's than human. They're like I seven need. foot or something. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't need that anywhere near me. <laughs> Absolutely anywhere near me. I mean, if they were fit, I still would. Question. Mm-hmm. What could people at this point possibly love about 
Cliff Richard with his, especially with his newly besmirched reputation. Like, he got a newly besmirched reputation? Well, do you, didn't you remember that they were like, he's a paedophile? And then it was like... Well, and everyone over. said it, but then he had a really strong campaign to be like, I'm actually not. Well, this is what's fucking mental. Is that, first of all, like, what are we loving about Cliff Richard? Like, do we think that he's got the bangers? He's got, he was actually very gorgeous in the 60s. Look up now, Cliff Richard's summer holiday. Like, like I've, I know exactly. I've dream. seen the video. You think he's gorgeous? Yeah, That's quite a mad thing to come out of your mouth. If I'm honest, me and Kim used to have a Cliff Richard calendar in Clinton Road on the kitchen door. If you remember, That's, I mean, like not, not like in a very fifties way. Like he's a dreamboat. Sure, okay. I mean, not really for me. He's a bit, he's a bit smiley, but sure, I get it. I get it. Is he also like maybe um, not fully white, Cliff Richard, or is that just the sort of fifties dreamboat? Um, Elvis tan that they put on everything. I think so. Oh, okay, great. Um, and have you seen the film Summer Holiday? I have not. Oh, uh, it's quite fab. Well, he basically, um, he basically, they were like, oh, he's a paedophile. And rather than like, obviously hung by the um, jury of public opinion, which is like, in all the papers, that like Cliff Richard's house is raided for child child pornography thing. and then but if you were famous around that age like oh they were all doing it so you've got to check these things yeah but like it's so insane that that's not kept private because it's like regardless of whether that's true or not which i think actually they find out that they were like we didn't find anything in his house no but he's then, just a crazy jesus freak yeah, that's his issue like a fucking creepy guy that then it's like well now that's what you find when you search his name that's now what people rem- like is oh, it well, like now people are like, oh, that happened. Do you know what I mean? It's like, he doesn't have music out anymore. He doesn't like, the the, the most recent thing in the news is that that happened to him. I don't believe that. I feel like he's releasing new Jesus tunes all the time. Oh, really? Maybe it's just not really, it's, I'm not getting it on TikTok. <sighs> You're on the wrong talk. Yeah. Cliff talk. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I it but baffles me what people love about Cliff Richard. But listen, not everything's for everyone. Not everything's for everyone. Exactly. Shall we move on to the runway? Oh, I wish we would, which is, how's your headpiece? How's your headpiece? Lovely bit of marketing for our girls down in, are they in Tilworth, I believe? I don't know. Lovely, for shout out to the how's your head girls, love them. What would you have gone with? Can you say first? Well, I have a think, because I haven't actually written it down. Oh, no, I, ha- oh, no. I didn't really have anything specific, but it would just be 100% something very like Ziegfeld Follies vibe, just pure unadulterated ott vintage glamour very the reigns of marmalade yeah very that i actually did think about this because i was like oh hold up what i would want to do which i think i've actually said before on the pod but it's just because it's like an enduringly fantastic fab look is you know obviously the um rothschild uh surrealism yeah surrealism party i'd want to do something that was like dali-esque that was like maybe like in sort of like ball gown, so like sort of a nod to that period, but then like a huge. There's like a very famous photo of like a woman with it. She's got like long like auburn hair, and then she's got this like crazy um, sort of like uh, deer head on mm. with like huge horns, something like that. That's just like very surreal and very strange. What is it, you clock face? <laughs> Let's talk first up. We have Mama serving Ziegfeld. What did you think? Ten. Out of motherfucking 10. You loved. Obsessed. Gorgeous. The face, so heavenly. I love the fact that uh, Walklet Wiggs got a shout out for that that one yeah, little good. curl. It better do. <laughs> he actually posted, posted good. it as well. I would as well. <laughs> it's, listen, it, Rome weren't built in a day and everyone clocked together to get that gorgeous... So uh... like if you actually look at the outfit, it is a, just a lot of sort of lame and sequin tassels, but the whole look of it is just absolutely gorgina and then yeah the the face card does she, not she doth not decline does Mm-mm. she um she's got overdraft for days it is absolutely heavenly she was giving me also as well the makeup with the very thin brow and the very arch brow she was giving me like very early um greta garbo and mm. she just i mean she's just absolutely stunning I, I gave it eight absolutely loved it next up we have kiki serving biblically accurate angel in an Edward Scissorhands wig. She's never looked so facially beautiful, I think. She's a gorgeous, gorgeous girl. Eh? But and this I... was just so, just like soft and lovely. The Shout make... out soft and lovely. Yeah. <laughs> the makeup is from very, unfortunately for you, I know you're not going to like me saying this. Her makeup recently, it's very neutral and it's very from the house of uh, Naomi Small's uh, neutral makeup world. Somewhere it well. Yeah, but not. Not Naomi. Uh, I, I get, I... <laughs> For me, this outfit wasn't, I, I, I didn't get this outfit. I enjoyed the headpiece. Okay. Because it could have That's just been like 
just like angel wings but I kind of like the it was kind of like going out in different directions but yeah just like the white and the big disc sequin just wasn't rocking my world yeah at all I'd give this maybe like a six and a half okay yeah I gave this six next up we have her royal highness Lil seven scappers it's funny she says scappers because well she does a whole Victor and Rolf shoot which is there which is literally Pierre Gilles sorry that's what I mean yeah my like whole life ambition is to have one of these photos I'm Gallies, obsessed. if you don't know there is a parisian uh lovely bunch of gays called pierre et gilles i must have mentioned called... them about 20 times they're on the pod before pierre and Jill. um peter and giles <laughs> um and they do sort of how would you describe their work it's like just like the most dreamy 3d like when you see how they make it there's like so many like layers and it's all like actual effects and just look them up they've done like so many schlebs yeah i guess they're like set designers as much as they are um uh, as much as they are photographers yeah like, super gay super camp just like the hyper literal romantic dream you hyper would ever dream like um and yeah and they do this amazing portraiture of celebrities and they're often like they have like real like crazy depth of field and they, they have these like amazing like framework it's just yeah it's mm. absolutely gorgeous i shared one of their things uh maybe like last year and then um i think it was pierre liked it oh hi pierre speaking of i shared a picture of tonya and uh and tonka the chimp aka tom and ben and old crazy chimp lady reposted it i bet she does a bit all she is is up on the social i feel like i've already said this at the top yeah, of the yeah, thing well it's good to let him know yeah i was absolutely obsessed with this i gave it nine loved it so much loved the colors loved the everything about the execution heaven in terms of the outfit i wish that they kind of um what would you call them like centipede things i wish they were kind of incorporated into the headpiece as well i believe it had mills legs Mills are legs. Do you remember when you I tried to tell you that millipede has got a thousand legs, not a million? And you were like, no, it's a million. And because we talk about millfoy, and I was like, it's a thousand layers. You're like, it's a million layers. And it's like, wow. I just can't, I just can't believe that mill is not million. But you're the, you're the but French, I believe it now. French part. I believe it now. Uh, and also, well, I just, I don't think I've ever said thousand in, in French. Well, anyway. Mille. I love this. Not as much as marmalades, but I give it, I give this like a, an eight. Love. But I would give the, the Instagram picture, 150. Next up, we have Lavoie serving Blackpool Tropicana. What are your thoughts? Absolutely loved it. We're talking headpiece alone. I thought it was fucking amazing. This is amazing. right up Lucrezia La Bomba's. It um, is. Love it? me a bit of vintage, uh, pomp and circumcision. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, just like, it's just so big. There's <laughs> so much going on. Didn't love the outfit, but like the foot, the headpiece was amazing. And she had even smaller spit curl. Hers was like three. Yeah. Actually, you know, Marmalade's wasn't small, it was perfect, but she's just got like, just like a little three strand of red. But what I did think <laughs> she did well is that she didn't, obviously Carmen Miranda is like a very specific cultural reference and what she didn't do is take it down the... The fruits. Uh, yeah, like let's pop a bit more bronzer on and have some some cheeky kiss curls or whatever. Not like your girl Ravenwood. Exactly. Um... I, when I first saw this, I was like, always oh, bright, always oh, very campy, it's always oh, very draggy. Wasn't sure it was for me, but then when I saw it, I thought, good on you, girl. Yeah. This is real, this is real draggy shit, isn't it? Wasn't, some of the, the cut of the outfit was a bit old maiden, but I loved but it. But she couldn't be there in like a full on Copa Cabana thong. Really, sure. Could I she? thought it was fun and I really liked the beat. I really liked it. I'd give this an eight. I gave it an eight too. Next up, we have Kyran serving so many heads. I didn't. I don't understand why she had the mould on her face. No idea. I guess maybe like it's a kind of like Petri dish and it's like a little freak experiment. Yeah. But I don't think she needed it. Or if I would have liked more mould on the rest of the body as well. Yeah, agreed. I and, did love this though. Mm, the only thing I thought was a bit of a shame was the, the faces ribbons. weren't actually very... Like you couldn't tell it was her face for in the moulds. No. It could have just been any face. But then I wonder whether you would ever be able to tell that if it doesn't have eyes, if it doesn't have like any, like it was kind of just supposed to be peeking through the latex, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Um, my only gripe was when she turned around, it had ribbon just like in a knot hanging at the back, which just seemed like a very strange. Mm, maybe that was like latex string and that kind of broke. So she had to do a last minute jobby yeah maybe maybe that's a good point i'd give this a nine i gave it a nine i still absolutely loved it next up we have chanello serving haberdashery i've got some uh, info on this go on give us the intel 
Ellis Atlantis and someone else helped spray painting, spray painting over 2,000 buttons. And Ellis also applied all the stoning to the dress. How does and Chanel And the know? wig was constructed by It's Just Sire. Uh, sorry, the headpiece was constructed by It's Just Sire and also goes on the wigs by Sire wig. So they were kind of made to work together, the wig and the headpiece by the same person, which is very interesting and cool. How does Chanel know Ellis and Atlantis. Sire? I don't know. Well, she could have just gone to Sire to be like, make me some stuff. But, but then why is Ellis? I don't know. Maybe she's from Butte, but she doesn't live up there still. Yeah, maybe. Is where's Ellis living? Uh, I believe they're Manchester girls. I believe. I don't know. Maybe. Um, interesting. I thought this was. It was en per simple. It was very. It was very simple. Mm. Um, it didn't fascinate me. It didn't excite me. But I thought it was nice. I thought it was fun, and I liked the boot. I like it. I mean, it is a headpiece. It is very interesting. I just think that the the kind of like dress of it lets it down a bit. Yeah, it was just. I don't think it was worth spray painting two thousand buttons because I didn't. That didn't really read to me. Like they could have just been like sequins or something. And you famously just want you want your buttons loosened up. Oh, loosen them up, babes. Very pale legs as well. I would give this a a Sally Hansen spray on tights. Mm. Six and a half truffles. Okay. Next up, we have Relisa serving Rihanna at crop over. Thoughts? It, at first, I was like, oh, it's a bit kind of boring. But I like how, obviously, this isn't headpiece related, but I like how the wings and the headpiece all kind of like came together down the back. Mm. It was very like bird-like. It was all very one thing rather than like, I got a headpiece and I got some wings. It all kind of worked together. Mm. Always, as always, would have liked a more cinchy waist. Yeah. Um confused that it's a bird but she's in tiger print but generally i'll give it a seven well you always you with your cinchy waist let's let the girls be blocky i don't want hog body eyes on there let us be blocky (laughs) um yeah for me this just was not that exciting but i mean not everything is for everyone you know um i thought that it was a fun it just it just felt a bit I had this already. Yeah. And also as well for like headdress, I think I personally would probably, if I was going on drag race, would probably stay away from it. It's like, okay, what are the two? I mean, maybe this is a bit unfair considering Lavoie did quite well when she did maybe the most famous headdress known to man. But apart from that, it's like, what else is the two most famous headdresses that you could possibly put on on a runway? It's like showgirl feathers, Kylie-esque or like... um, Carnival. Carnival. Yeah, and so I just, and I think that both of them have been done to absolute death on the runway. I don't know. I just probably wouldn't have gone that route myself. So how many truffles in Uh, the trough? I gave it uh, six. Six truffles. Next up, we have Activia serving Richard Quinn meets Klaus Nomi. Is that what she said? Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Oh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought it was fun. She said how apparently the, something weird happened to the headpiece. I can't remember that was on the show or I saw on her Mm. socials. So it's actually a bit misshapen. But yeah, very interesting. And I've never realised, I've always noticed that she's got these kind of spikes coming out of her eyebrow, but I never noticed it was an A for Octavia. So yeah, wow. Breaking boundaries with the makeup. I liked it. I would give the whole thing seven and a half. Oh, because I don't think, I think it is, yeah, more of a hat than a headdress, but it is nice. That is true. I gave this an eight. I thought this was fun. I liked, it was monochromatic. It was interesting. D- uh, different silhouette that we don't see very often. I like the referential, um, I like the referential thing of like, it is obviously like deeply inspired by Richard Quinn. And it's like sort of, I love that sort of baby and doll. And Bo Quinn. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's like deeply like soft and feminine and also like sort of juvenile, I guess that big sort of flouncy mm. ball of silk, but then it's got the sort of S and M vibes. Of, Sexy legs. Yeah. The arms and legs being, uh, leather, rubber. I think a PVC. Oh, Maggie, yeah. stop messaging us. We're recording. We're recording, Maggie. So it was embarrassing. A nine. Um, and I gave it an eight. Um, and I really liked it. Next up we have Charity serving Gumball. Do you know what she puts as inspiration for this? What? Ah, it's Jade, who we did that big giant red double stack for with the braid. She does like the kind of like yeah. gothy scape. It just... She said her is, that's the actual reference for it. Inspiration at three, it's Jade. Wow. I thought this was more of a full costume than like the gumball thing being a headpiece. Yeah, I would argue that the, 
it wasn't a headpiece at all. But I don't really know what, before I start throwing around phrases like that, it's like... Um, I mean, it's definitely a thing on her head, but it feels like it's... But like a headpiece is something that you could take on and off and this is just part of a whole thing. Yeah, it's like that's... Like you've stepped into a costume. You're basically mm. in like a TARDIS. Like, it's yeah. Not, it doesn't... Yeah, but what did you think about the outfit? I thought it was cool. Like she is really quite surprising me. I'm not like... Same. Loving, loving it, but she's a lot more out of the box than I thought she was going to be on first... I thought it was fun and I liked the beat. Yeah. Um, I think, again, agreed. She, if I'm honest, even though obviously we share a homeland and I have a deep ancestral tie to her, she is probably that sort of, like I said, that sort of like very colourful, like um, children's TV presenter vibe is probably not something that I would gravitate towards naturally. Mm. But I really like that she's actually like the the looks are like coming thick and fast from her. Yeah. She's like not just like and I guess maybe that's because she's probably not someone that would class themselves as like a fashion girly. Mm. She's like, no, I do costume, I yeah, do I'm drag a costume. So yeah, so, so I, I think we're getting more interesting sort of conceptual looks for her. So good for her. Let us move on to the zings and the mings. Oh. Huh. Huh. This is the part of the show where one, Lucrezia Gorsha, and I talk about the zinger and the minger. Well, we talk about one wig in the runway that really zinged for us and we loved, and one wing, unfortunately, that minged for us. Really not much to talk about wig wise. Because they've all got, do you, but do you know but what I did? Is on. Do you know what I did? Because I thought, oh, I've always been a bit of a boundary pressure, mm. always been ahead of the curve. I said, I'm going to do it for their um, interview looks. Fine. Because they were wearing headpieces, so none of them got wigs on. Well, my zinger was Chanel's wig by Sire. Yeah. One of the few wigs. Yeah. But there was. What was yours? Mine, I loved Mama's, t- uh, Miss Mama Duke's tonal waves. It was very simple, the black and the white in the interview. Mm-hmm. But I just thought it was very, I imagine probably Carl Brown. Or- yeah, or maybe Florencia. I reckon Carl Brown. I don't know why. It's just, it's, it's very, or nisha it's so um neat and perfect yeah it's just there's like a there's like a a finesse to it that i was like hot damn but i don't think actually that she has put that and she hasn't put it online so i'm not gonna be able to tell you unfortunately she's nasty i know i've always thought that about her um but maybe we message her and say babes where's it from because i would like to know um but i thought it looked very gorgeous and it was just very classic very chic Mm. and your minger it was Kiki's little lavender reverend wig that she wore in the interview. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Baby girl, that was like, it was so strange. It was like, I get if you're going to do like a little pussycat and it's like tight around the face. It's got some face framing something. But it was just like, the, it was like, it was lifted up off the head. And it had like a very chunky fringe. The sort of chunky fringe that you have cut in when you're like eight years old. Was it the have- same wig that she wore under her headpiece? Because that was a very... Sort of pastely crop maybe, as well. Maybe I can't. I can't. You got to speak to Edward Scissorhands about that then. Scissors, you maybe. What about you? What uh, it would be Lavoie's teeny tiny little red spit weft. Yeah. Okay. Fair. <laughs> fair, 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 fair. Um. Yeah. So the safe queens are Kyron, Chanel, and Relisa. Did you see Kyron's stance during the whole thing? Loved. <laughs> Is a queen ready for action? As a gay person, I was told not to take up space. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> Wow. That's a John Early quote. Sure. The girls that sure. get it, get it. I just thought you were mock- mocking our trauma. It's, no. It's, it's hard to know. Yeah. Um, in the judges' critiques, Michelle says to mom, this is something we haven't seen from you before because you're covered. Implying that normally she's out here in like a bra top and pants. Like She's always pretty so fully dressed. You, what, just like high concept, gorgeous fashion. It's that bad thing. That's but she says because you're seen... covered. Yeah, mad. Strange. But we've learned not to listen to Shelley no. because she also says, you look like the lost member of the Wiggles. First of all, bitch, we are, we're in our, we're in our 30s and 40s. Like, who the fuck are the Wiggles? No, I don't Like, know. you're lost on us. And then also she was like, it's just, it's just too yellow. That yellow for you, it's just too yellow. It's like, first of all, bitch, she is a, she's, her like, whole tagline is that like, I'm a primary colour queen. Although I don't know if that was primary yellow. That was a bit more neon. I think the primary colours are just red, blue and yellow of any... Even if you're a pastel, like polar box red, but then pastel blue and like. No, pastels aren't primaries. 
Sure. He didn't do well. Um, art, but, didn't do but, well. I can't even talk. He didn't do very well in his art tests, did he? No, I didn't. I was too busy excelling in the theatre. I couldn't uh, find any pictures of steps in giant headdresses for love nor money. No. I think Claire's lying. They were too, they've got dance moves to do. Why would they be in headdresses? Actually, I feel like, even though I said she's lying, I feel like I do kind of remember them all coming out with these things on, but Question, I can't remember. Question just before we move on. Do you think the charity is too yellow? Is that your main critique for charity? Well, it's like you can't be like, oh, I hate chartreuse. And then like, no, no yellow either. Like, let the girls have the yeah. colours. Like powder yellow, gorgeous. Mustard, gorgeous. Like bright yellow. Yeah, all of these lemon yellow, gorgeous. I don't know like, if mustard's gorgeous. You don't? Oh, I love mustard, especially in the home. Like a lovely, like mustard coloured room. Gorgeous. Fine. I love a yellow. I Whatever love Whatever floats your log boat. Um, then should we head over to Untucked? Let's do it. When, what about when they just completely ignored? Kyron wanted a little moment just to be like, I'm the best here. Oh, I, I loved that whole bit. It felt like it, as if it was like a comedy skit or yeah. something. They were truly like, I will listen to anything but this. But, but this then did you hear that bitch. Kyron was just like, after she went through, then she was like, top, 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 top. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just loving Love the gals. Um, I want to be bold and I want to be vulnerable on the pod right oh now. Oh God. When Lavoie had her little moment when she was like, I don't get told that, she absolutely melted me. I thought, what gorgeous little, what, what a moment of heart. So you only hate her eight out of ten I don't now. hate her at all. I think she's, <laughs> I think she's a fab queen. Um, I just, th- that moment, I was like, I haven't even thought about that. Like, that is true. Like, it is, you are, uh, someone at that age, do we reckon she's in her 50s? I know they've gave She's 43, it. how that's, dare you? I mean, that's absolutely not true. Um, but, when you're at that age, you are working twice as hard for half the recognition. Like, fucking the... Well, you she's get, a crone. Uh, literally, but you get, like, one 18-year-old baby twink in a, a human hair AliExpress unit that can, like, swing about on the ropes and then jump into a split and everyone will be up screaming. It's like, Lavoie has to come in and she's, like... She's doing, like, six numbers for £50 pounds for the night. Do you know what I mean? Like, she has to work. How dare you? She's a internationally known famous drag queen i'm sure she's getting more than 50 pounds she's doing 500 shows a week it was hyperbolic i was being silly wow but she like she i i do agree that and that she's like she does feel like it it feels like sometimes when you watch her that she does feel like she's trying to keep up but it was like look babe like the level of execution that you put into these things you got it you're fine what did you think about Octavia throwing Kiki's name into the going to be lip syncing ring? Did you think that was Sade or did you think that was obvious? I think obvious, baby. Yeah. Like when she was like, okay, uh, that felt like shade. It's like, like, girl, look at you, look at them. <laughs> um, very into Kikisms. Yeah. Oh, my heart was Luke-isms. bleeding for her then when she was like, I've never been understood. That's why I have to invent these Kikisms. Like, oh. I thought it was very interesting just to get a bit uh, sort of Freudian on you, get a bit psychoanalysis y yeah analysis yeah um it's t- very very tough if you don't see yourself how everyone else sees you and i really felt like it was a bit of that that she's like when you're it's kind of a bit from the school of um less culturally insensitive but like it's kind of a bit from the school of um what's her name uh kind of like your vagina what's her name the ganja when it's like she genuinely thinks that she is giving being her personality and being fun and being like giving you character and energy that that's that's what she's like but it's like baby girl that's that's not what you're like and that's and it's so transparent it's so transparent and everyone sees through that and it's like when she was on that when she's in the interview she has an energy she has a lightness to her and an ease that as soon as you saw her on the thing it was like i don't even know her and i was like that's not you yeah you are trying to be someone else like the way that you're talking and the, the energy you're giving now is like you can tell that that is inauthentic and it's obviously she's not doing it like She's not trying to fuck herself up. But, but she's, she's like, I am performing. I must yeah, perform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's doing it because she thinks that that's subconsciously, that's what the audience want. But it's like, actually, if you could, and that's when you see people like Lavoie, why they do so well is because she gets, she knows herself and she can just like, she knows herself and she can just sit and not put on anything and just be herself and be authentic. And that's why people, then it I guess makes people love you. I guess that comes age and experience yeah. as well. Oh, why? Do you think she's maybe a bit older than the other girls? Well, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But also actually, even in the confessionals, I do feel like Kiki is putting on a bit of a show, but like that's, that's an acceptable level. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's what we wanted to see. Yeah. This chat with Chanel and Chanel, Chanel and Chara. Chanel. I didn't know how to take it. I just like, I kept waiting for Chanel to be like, psych, like you cannot, 
go from being queen bitch, I hope mom, anyone but mom gets a badge to be like, you know, that really threw me off and I promised I would never be silenced again. Like, okay, like she has hit a fucking nerve with yeah. that, hasn't she? There's more going on here. Like, babes, you've, you've got to let it go. We need fun. We need fun energy. Yeah. And there's no, yeah. Um, should we head into the lip sync? Let's do it. I thought when they read out that our winners were... Lavoie. And that means that in the bottom two is... Octavia and Kiki. I thought, okay, this is going to be a banger. We've got a show coming up. Do you know what I mean? Get them red car- red curtains ready because it's about to be some theatre. Um, but are we going to share the most poisonous and asorbic, annoying gripe, I imagine? Why, why were you fuming? I wasn't fuming. You weren't fuming? No. Tell me why you would bring up a one Claire Richard from beloved British band oh, well, Steps. Yes. That's going to be, that was going to be my... Uh, it was mine as well. My thought of we the week. We can now think of another one because mine was, we still have enough deeper shade of blue. <laughs> um, I... Yeah, the disrespect to bring Claire in and not do a fucking Steps track. Like, and, and the thing is about... No one wants to see drag queens do Let's Dance. Yeah, and the thing is about Steps as well. It's like, Steps, because they're from the world of ABBA, their songs are so narrative based and they're like, they're so brilliant for lip syncing because imagine doing tragedy. Like the drama of tragedy. Like deeper shade of blue, one for sorrow. Have we ever, we've had one for sorrow, haven't we? No, we had last thing on my mind. I think. Oh uh, yeah, like they are. They're saving one for sorrow for when I go on. I hope. Yeah, they are arguably the one of the biggest UK bands that we've ever had, ever, ever. Well, like who else? Who else stands in the pantheon of British fans? <laughs> like it steps. They can sell out arenas now. Oh my God, have you seen some of the BTS scenes of the Steps musical on TikTok? No. I've sent you a couple. On TikTok? Oh no, I haven't seen them at all. You're well shot of it, Barney. It looks oh so mental. It's all like set in a supermarket and maybe just because yeah. it's like rehearsals, but it, it looks Shut so god awful that I cannot wait to see it. Oh my God. Just that's... like so cheesy. Like I mean, I don't know what I would expect from a Steps yeah, thing, but it's like, say. it's crazy. They did say to me in my in my audition, they when No River Medway on the on the footage so far though. Really? Interesting. Um they said to me in my audition that they were like Okay, the, I I did the song I did when I did uh whatever fucking song it was. When I did one of the songs, they were like, right, this we've we're getting we've got the maturity, we've got the sex, now we need like sell it to us, cheese. And I found that really hard. So probably why Ruth Medway got there it. You know you go. um, but it was, um, God, let's hope, let's hope the, now that I've graduated from drama school, my years aren't spent <laughs> fighting jobs out of River Medway's <laughs> greasy little mitts for Me the rest and of my life. Tom, we're going to go and see it in Birmingham, but I think we're going to wait and just wait for yeah, it to come I London think, now. Because hopefully by the time it gets to London, River Medway will be like, oh, I'm busy, babe. <laughs> um, Not since Electra Fence have we seen such mayhem on the main stage. Oh my God, that fucking pocket rocket that is Electra Fence. Do you remember just how, how nuts she was on the show? Well, do you remember her doing the like spinning on her back and everyone was like saying she's like a cockroach or yeah. something? <laughs> yeah, it's like when you get the raid out. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And also the uh, the appearance of, um, God, Octavia's got some fucking insane hair up in that wig wardrobe, isn't she? <laughs> but I'm, I'm actually- really glad she did that quick change because it really... Same matched her energy it really reminded which was strange, me strange i don't think anything i've never seen so much energy and in- it really reminded me of that do you remember that god awful black uh like mullet situation that we did and we did the video too um and we in in you know in your mum's sex pistols t-shirt yeah yeah and we did that black mullet that i believe was for petite lame petite lame yeah petite lame um crazy uh but what about Aki T locking in the opening bars? When she started doing that, I was like, what the fuck is going on? This is insane. My jaw was literally on the floor the whole time. Talk about like a one and a two and a three. She's literally like one and two and a three and a four and a five, yeah, six and seven and eight. half counts. I caught eighth counts. Yeah, literally, at one point I've it was never... just a blur. It was like the Matrix. And then so many just like tr- dropping down and jumping back up. Yeah. Honestly. Like... She has got. She was bringing the NRG. And what's so crazy is LSD that... plucks 
XTC equals NRG. Um, what's crazy is that um, in the main streets of London, Miss Kiki Snatch is known. She's a performer, right? She's like, that girl is like out here doing shit. Like she's, when you watch a Kiki Snatch show, she goes off. I really enjoy, I think this is my, I enjoyed this lip sync more than any of her other ones. Yeah. So yeah, I thought, I thought she was great in the lip sync. Yeah, well. she was really giving soft, but also giving you the quick yeah, Quick she had, fire. she was high energy, but also I felt like she had good dynamic. The pigs and the troughs. Yeah, exactly. The and rose in the film. And we as pigs need troughs. Um, I did think she looked absolutely divine as well. There was one shot when she looked out and I was like, oh my God, if if I saw you across a crowded bar, mm. oh Lord, the pussy be doing Olympic flips. Answer me one thing. Why was Octavia reminding me so much of our good Swamp Fairy friend, Iona? <laughs> Ask me, answer me one question. Why was Kiki's wig on the back of her head like Selma of Patty and Selma fame? At one point she had trying to end, it was just like, it was like barely, it was like clutching on. Like it was so far back. Did you not clock? No. Not a soul can clock. Though. I was too busy going cross-eyed looking at Octavia moving so far. I thought Miss Taves was giving quite Aquaria energy. That's the second time you've mentioned Aquaria in respect. I think she was like the way that she, you know, Aquaria is like big kicks and lots of pointing and lots of, she's quite, quite mm. Aquaria can be quite manic in that, um, in that way. And I thought she was just, so who did you think won it? I thought Octavia just because similar to Zahira, Kiki's Zahira. been circling the drain for a while now. Oh, wow. Would you say she's like the proverbial lock of hair? That was, a, I, don't, I don't really I don't know, know where I was going. I don't really know where I was going though. She just said she'd been circling the drain. It's like, what does she look like in this drain? Well, you know, just like, just like we've just been waiting and for cum. her to kind of, she's like kind of been safe on the skin of her teeth a few times. And it's kind of felt like it was her time to go. Sure, 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 sure. But also there's something that I just love that's so endearing about Keeks that she's just like, even if she looks like warmed up shit, she's kind of like, oh. I think I look sick though. And yeah, I just love, love that. that so much. Like we've got quite a if few. If you don't believe in yourself, no one else is going to exactly. believe in you. Exactly. And we've got quite a few queens in Dalston like that, that just like their whole shtick is like, a lot of the East London girls is just like, I look like shit and I love it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just like, and it's like, that's that to me is drag. That to me is punk drag. Like I don't need to like what you're doing, but I need you to like it. Yeah. And it's like. Because if you don't like it, I'm certainly not going to yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what I really respect about her, that she's like, Quite often when they're like, she's not, she doesn't really seem that bothered by them being like, because even in this week, I can't remember who it was, maybe RuPaul was just like, there's a world in which like you just, he was basically like, there's a world in which you just look much better. Yeah. Look at that body, you can wear anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just like, there's a much more elevated, like interesting version of Kiki. And, she's and like, there is, maybe so, she'll come yeah, back maybe. for an all-stars in like three years. Yeah. A bit of coin, a bit of international coin from now being off the telly. Because yeah. that's all it takes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Little bit of cash monies. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, I really I really liked this episode because it was fun and I thought it had good NRG. Um, but then unfortunately we do have to say goodbye to Kiki Snatch. We do have to say goodbye I'm to Kiki forgotten. Snatch. Sad, sad, sad. Um, let's talk the rose and let's talk the thorn. The rose and thorn. Um, my rose was uh, Lil's uh, look. I feel like the head, the headpiece of it is you don't often see. I love when people reference like modern fashion. I mean, obviously referencing Scaparelli isn't like actually modern because it's all sort of referential of like post sort of archival looks. Or but, Chaparelli as Queen Kong would call him. Yeah, Shkeep. Um, but I just love that it's like, I love when you see, you get it in America, but we don't get it often in UK that they're just like, there's like a very clear reference there of the work of them, but it's like, she still made it super interesting and mm. made it her own. So love that for Lil. What about you? My rose was in general, just kind of loved the headpiece category. Yeah. Same, and same, same. also just what the fuck did I just watch in that lip sync? Like I haven't been that like, <laughs> yeah, the jewel of bunny time. energy of it all. Quite. <laughs> Quite, quite insane. Now, my original, uh, as I ruined earlier, my original thorn was that, why aren't we getting a step, step sync? Um, and now I can't think of like an, another negative because just, just loved, loved, loved it. I say my replacement negative will be, is this the end of Chanel the bitch? I need the bitch oh, to come back. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. She's, I think as the pressure cooker gets worse and it gets, we get deeper into it, she's only obviously going to have to get worse. 
Obviously. I hope so. Yeah. Um, I would actually say that my fi- my thorn would have to be just the weird um, uncanny valley energy of Raven when she came in. She was just standing there, like, <laughs> pose, hands on hips, just like staring out. It was like, I don't really... Actually, it was the mini challenge. What the fuck was the mini challenge? Oh, I like There's a few good jokes in there. Oh, okay. The little pink chair. Um, but um, if you've enjoyed the podcast, as I know hundreds of you do, um, as we can tell by our stats... Um, why don't you head into the little notes uh, bit that says that it explains what the episode is going to be about. And it says that you can subscribe to become a part of the inner circle of uh, Cliffhangers. And we do, as a little present to you, we do an extra little podcast called uh, The Hangover, Whoa. where we talk about basically anything, what's going on in the world, in the gay world, but also anything you want us to. You can send us an email, send us a DM and say, oh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And we do. This yeah. week I've got some information on... What celebrity is earning more from foot pics on OnlyFans than their Spotify listens? And Lily. what animal... Why are you ruining my things? Because it's huge, it's huge gay news, but we, we need to talk about it. Yes, and also certain animals are getting high off other certain animals in oh, the oceans. Oh my God. Okay, I'm listening to it. Um, also, we dissected um, some very great urban legends last week. Um, and we just, listen, we shoot the shit. Let's be real. And so if you'd like to, for the mere price of a coffee, once once a month, um, if you'd like to support the queer art, as we know you would love to, then just head over to that and subscribe. And then you get free access to free shit. <clears throat> Next time on Drag Go Race, on. Yeah. we are playing the Snatch Game with John and Rach from S Club 7. Love. And don't John look like he's been touched by an angel? A little refresh for Mr. What's his name? John Oh, I don't bloody Evans. know. I think it's an Evans. He's got so much forehead. I don't know where to start. Oh, I know. You'd hire it out and rent films off it. And also, we've got the old Queen Vic showdown. As it looks like Lil and Charity want to do the same character. What's going to happen? Find out next week on Cliffhangers. Oh, see you then, girls. All right. Bye. Bye.